Yes, we can begin. Yes, we are live now. Okay. Uh, a very good evening to all the faculty, scholars, and students who are present in this program today. Uh, this interactive lecture session is the seventh of its kind being conducted by the Department of English, Diamond Harbor Women's University, on a regular basis. The aim is to keep our students and faculty abreast with the changing paradigms in the field of literary studies. And today's session is special because we have an eminent poetess of her country. She is none other than our beloved Sukit Tarani. And to start this session, I request uh, Dr. Madhumita Mojumdar, Associate Professor and Head of the Department, to deliver her welcome address. Please, Madhumita Di. Madhumita Di, you are muted. A very good every, uh, evening to everyone. Uh, I welcome, ma'am, uh, you to this uh, lecture series. We have been conducting this lecture series for some time, and this would be the seventh one in the series. The intention of the Department of English, Diamond Harbor Women's University, in conducting this series is not only to, you know, uh, open, uh, let's say, uh, the minds of our scholars to different uh, thoughts and different uh, uh, literary sensibilities, but also perhaps to newer ventures. Of course, today we are uh, eagerly waiting to hear from you, um, your uh, experience as a poet. And of course, uh, uh, this would be an upcoming area for, you know, for our research scholars, you know, who probably would want to work in this marginalized uh, part of uh, history. And um, uh, with that warm welcome, I, uh, uh, extend uh, now my uh, invitation to both uh, Aparna Singh, who would be in conversation to you today, and Dr. Habib Subhan to please introduce you. Thank you. Yeah, please. Thank you, Mundimitadi, uh, for setting the tone of the session. Uh, Matt Warnell had once said that the future of poetry is very immense. It has high destiny, and as the, same, as the time passes, uh, mankind will discover that we have to turn to poetry to interpret life for us, to counsel mm -hmm. us, and to sustain us. Mm -hmm. This is possible when poetry maintains high seriousness a poet and a poet uh, remains committed to the core idea of sincerity and seriousness and truth. Today, we are fortunate to have such a sincere and committed poetist whose writings have helped us to understand the lives of Dalit women from a very close proximity. Our poetry in the present times helps us to work through the times of personal, social and political turmoil. She has been critiquing the social discrimination of people, the operation of women and India and, and the world through her writings. She is widely acclaimed for her contribution uh, to contemporary Dalit and Tamil literature in India. Sukritarani uh, has seven published books to her credit. Several of her poems are a part of curricula in colleges across the state and have been translated into languages such as English, Malayalam, Kannada, Hindi, Bengali, and German. Kalashu Vedu, one of the prestigious publishing house of Tamil Nadu and India, has brought out a classic edition of her six books into one volume in honor of her literary career of more than two decades. It was entitled Supitrani Kabi, Kabi, uh, Kabi uh, Gigal, uh, 2002 to 2022. And uh, most importantly, many scholars have done and have been doing the research doctoral research work on her writings. A permanent museum for poetry in Florence in Italy has placed one of her poems handwritten by herself in her native language in display. It was also uh, translated into Italian and kept on display here. There are many more achievements to her credit which cannot be said right now uh, within this short span of time. She as a writer was born in 1973 and she did her master's in economics and Tamil literature. Mm -hmm. At present, she lives in Lalapet of Ranipet district in Tamil Nadu, India, and teaches Tamil at the Department of Higher Secondary School for 10th graduate student. With this brief introduction, I hand it over to Madhumita Di. Yes, uh, uh, thank you, Habib, uh, for that uh, introduction. I think now we can begin this evening of rendezvous. Aparna Singh, 
This is yours. Aparna Singh is the assistant professor in the Department of English, Diamond Harbor Women's University. So Aparna, please. Uh, thank you, Madhumitadi. Thank you, Habib. Uh, it is uh, indeed an honor and a privilege to be in conversation with poet uh, Suketa Rani. Her poems are widely read and for the aura or, and admired for the uh, aura of power they exude, the richness of expressions, the deft use, use of images that are so organically connected and they stem from the issues that she deals with, issues ranging from the notion of identity, nation, body, and of course, the idea of marginality. Now, her poems question, critique, and subvert the normative. And before I engage with her in this much awaited rendezvous, I would like to begin with a reading of one of her poems, which was uh, translated by Lakshmi uh, Holmstrom. The, po uh, the poem is titled Infant Language. <clears throat> Infant Language. I need a language still afloat in the womb, which no one has spoken so far, which is not conveyed through signs and gestures. It will be open and honorable, not hiding in my torn underclothes. It will contain a thousand words which won't stab you in the back as you pass by. The late night dreams I memorized, hoping to share them, will not be taken for complaints. Its meanings will be as wide as the skies. Its gentle words won't wound the tender surface of the tongue. The keys of that unique language will put an end to sorrow, make way for a special pride. You will read there my alphabet and feel afraid. You will plead with me in words that are bitter, sour, and putrid. And to go back to my shards of darkened glass. And I shall write about that too, bluntly, in an infant language, sticky with blood. So I think uh, a very powerful poem indeed. Uh, so, you know, I, before I begin with the questions on language, your, your identity as a Dalit writer and everything else, the first question I would pose is, uh, how would you like to be addressed as a writer, a Dalit writer, or a Dalit woman writer? I am delighted to join in this program with you all. Good evening. Um, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Um, <clears throat> writing is common to all. Writing is for everyone. Um, uh, the writing keeps the world moving. For what? But who uh, writes? For what it is something written? For why? Are in these important questions too. I write about uh, caste, about religion, about society, about miso misogyny, about uh, oppression of women, and uh, untouchability. It is the society that uh, refuses me to see me as a writer and uh, instead uh, it seems me as a uh, women writer, Dalit women writer. In, uh, in a way I am casteless, Dalit are casteless, but the society keeps Dalit inside the caste system to perpetuate its own dominance. Our aim is not to leave the caste. It is to completely destroy the caste. Until we are able to completely destroy the caste, we need to write within its frame. So when I write carrying the identity of the uh, Dalit writer, it means that there is a need for Dalit writing. If I write, carrying the identity of the Dalit women writer, uh, it means that there is a need for Dalit women writing. Um, Dalit means liberation, no? It means equality. It means uh, freedom. It means fraternity. Dalit literature encompasses all these ideas. It is a matter of pride to create such writing, such literature. 
So I like calling myself a Dalit writer, a Dalit poet. Okay. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for that and for kind of clarifying the idea that although you are a writer, the idea, your identity kind of is always there with you. Even if you want to escape it, it is kind of imposed on you. And that again becomes a badge of honor for you, something that you can use as a voice of resistance. So now if you could just, you know, tell us about uh, your childhood and, you know, growing up as a Dalit uh, uh, as a daughter in a Dalit family. And maybe, you know, you can also talk about when you encountered uh, uh, untouchability and oppression in the name of caste. Yes, I am uh, from a village called Lalapet in Ranipeti district of Tamil Nadu. I grew up uh, in one of the 10 Dalit families of the area. Uh, both my parents did not uh, cross the primary level of education. My generation was the first to earn a degree. I have five siblings, uh, three sisters and two brothers. My grandfather played parai. parai. You know, the parai is a musical instrument. After which uh, Dalits of Tamil Nadu were named paraya. It's a musical instrument. Uh, my grandfather played parai in events of the village. My father worked in EAD Parry uh, as a laborer uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in festivals and funerals. Parry is an important part of the rituals. Every year one should be chosen for uh, to perform the task of playing Parry. Uh, my father should uh, refused. My father protested and the panjait of the, the village panjait called him and cast him out of the village. As my father uh, was working in a EAD Parry company in Ranipet, so it, it did not affect him. That time my father uh, felt that the education and the um, power of will um, uh, will raise our resistance. No, the, the, it, it will be very helpful to us. Um, education and uh, economic power are very helpful to Dalit to, to raise our voice against the society. So this is my childhood life. And when I was studying in second standard, there was an incident that I can never forget. A girl in my class gave me a coconut candy. I wanted to return her, uh, my kindness, so I bought her a sweet candy. Next day, when I gave it to her, uh, she pushed my hand away. At that moment, I was uh, I I was both confused and uh, hurt, and found much later why she behaved so. The girl belonged to. Uh, so-called upper class. You know, those days, not only those days. Nowadays, uh, this is happening in every part of the country. Uh, children of that community were told not to mingle with the Dalit children, uh, not to play with the Dalit children. Uh, the the parents asked them, uh, "Don't touch the Dalit girls or the Dalit boys." Uh, don't share your food with them. Everything they they were told the students. You no, know? so my yeah, childhood period was blank for 15 years. I never forget this uh, moment. Uh, um, this was a first incident in my life. Uh, now I I am a teacher, uh, which the school. Uh, where I studied, no, uh, I'm working in the same school now. And uh, and sec uh, this was the first incident in my life. Um, and the second one is, I'm I was uh, uh, I got first stand in the classroom uh, when I studied. Um, on those days, when I studied, on those days. Government uh, provide uh, free books and notebooks to Dalit uh, students. 
students. My father was uh, no very poor, no. So uh, we have five siblings. I have so uh, there is no money to uh, buy clothes and notebooks and books. So we we were eagerly waiting for the books which the government provides for us students. Uh, after um, of the examination, uh, they will provide the. textbook and the uh, books only two books, uh, english and uh, tamil books they were given um so even i have no uh, notebooks no books even though i got first rank in the class now i am a teacher um i can ask the my student to sit i face you no know, in the classroom but at that time um i am a, uh, i was i am a dalit uh, student um, i got first first rank in the class but my teacher my class teacher asked me to sit in the back bench um, that time who got the first first rank the teacher uh, will ask the students to come forward and sit very near to the class teacher um, i am a dalit girl i got the first rank always i got first rank in the class at uh, any uh, monthly test or quarterly examination uh, any test i got first rank so my uh, class teacher asked me to sit in the back bench uh, there was no uh, friends for me sharing my uh, paying sharing my food no no one was there to help me Uh, this is a second incident in my life when I was schooling. Uh, that time I I feel very bad, but I I couldn't understand why uh, this was uh, happening because my age is at the time was only thirteen or four. So I, I I know something about this why all are happening, but I couldn't express why these are all happening to me. Uh, I think because the mental age and the physical age is no. So these yes. are the two incidents. Uh, Third one, my brother uh, was a good reader. Uh, he, he was reading many novels, you know, in Tamil Nadu. Popular writers are uh, uh, novelist stars, uh, Vasanthi, Vimala Varam. There are so many novelists out there. My brother used to uh, read the novels. So the reading habit. Uh, Uh, came from my brother i think so first i i started my write my reading um by now by reading novels and the short stories so the my reading is uh, starting the habit of my brother okay thank you so much ma'am and i think this kind of bring me to my next question because you were talking about how you know schools uh, i uh, play a very important yeah. role in uh you know for, they they have a very important role to play in contesting these kinds of oppressive systems so now since you were a dalit a student at those in those times you probably did not have a voice to protest and not do things in the way you wanted to but now that you are a teacher uh what do you think what could the roles of teachers in these circumstances should be or could be so that they could you know uh, uh, let a more uh, freer and open uh, space allow a more freer and open space for the students to develop and grow uh, irrespective of which caste or class they belong to i mean just to put it simply i mean the role of a teacher needs to be you know kind of uh, rethought and uh, it it is and and it, you need to also understand how important it is to question these hierarchies as a teacher so that the student can feel safe the student can feel you know uh, important the student can feel free to get what others are wanting uh, what uh, what others are uh, getting so your yes. role as a teacher yes Uh, in, in not only in tamil nadu but also all over the india the teacher should know uh, how to deal with the students how to uh, teach the students 
about the caste issue, oppression of uh, Dalits, so many things, no? Um, I am teaching the uh, students of uh, uh, 10th standard students at the age group of 15 to 16. Uh, my poetry is not for that age, I think so. So uh, I teach them about a little bit of um, uh, women education, uh, women liberation, and uh, caste issues you know, uh, happening in Tamil Nadu. Uh, uh, I, I, I introduce the students about Periyar, Ayodhidas, Panditar, and Ambedkar. So uh, in many classes, uh, there are uh, lessons up from Ambedkar and Periya, but we can introduce uh, a little bit, you know, uh, the, their mental age and uh, uh, physical age is not fit for uh, studying deeply about Periya and uh, Ayurveda's Pandita. So I can introduce uh, uh, about Periya and Ayurveda's Pandita. Uh, if uh, in my school, uh, yeah, in my school, all uh, know that uh, I belong to uh, SA community. So if I uh, teach the children about Periya, about uh, uh, Ambedkar, no, uh, there is there will be a big problem. Uh, she is uh, Dalit. How, how she should uh, teach uh, um, about Periya and uh, Ayodhya uh, Sapandedar and Ambedkar, the problem will raise, I think so. So, uh, in the age group of 15 to 16, uh, it's, I think it's not suitable for uh, introduce very de in detail. Uh, no, so, what I uh, meant was, was that ma maybe not not uh, not introducing Ambedkar and Meriya in the syllabus, but at least creating a space where people feel more equal, because what I understood from uh, even you know maybe making the families through parent teacher meetings you know uh, realize or understand that these differences are all created by us you know if, maybe yeah one more thing to say but now that uh, um, um, if, uh, if, if there is a lesson of Ambedkar is there um, a Dalit teacher can uh, uh, teach it well okay you know uh, she uh, if the teacher can understand very well about the uh, Ambedkar and the Dalit movement and everything. No, what are the um, things about uh, women? Uh, Ambedkar uh, spoke. No, everything she knows, he knows. Okay, so she can uh, teach the children about um, Ambedkar and Peria very detailed. But uh, other teacher uh, from the other caste or upper caste, they uh, skip the uh, skip the lesson no, about the they, they just given uh, the, the very outline okay uh, not in detail they teach thank this you, thank is you. Major, <laughs> this is the major problem so the teacher should know everything about the uh, um, society but they are not uh, interested to know about the society they they they, they have knowledge only uh, to teach the lesson right thank you so much ma'am thank you for that uh, now let me just take a different uh, route uh, i mean what according to you because your poetry talks about the female body a lot what is what do you think could be the relation between nature and female body as reflected in your poetry yes Sabana, it is a wonderful question to me Yes, the nature is a uh, woman, or woman is nature. You can uh, construe in the way you want. She is uh, the sky, fire, land, and air. Nature is completely free. It has no limits, uh, no uh, barriers. It cannot be enslaved. There is no life uh, without nature. Uh, there will be no movement of life. Similarly, in absence of women, uh, there would be no social production like nature uh, the gifts the society with the resource the woman gifts her society with life it is only natural that she sits in the top of the hierarchy uh, she should have been celebrated by the society the society should serve her 
yet what happens uh, in exactly the opposite no i who have lost everything seek into the nature which is everything i seek i, I attain and i put forth my freedom i demand the <clears throat> nature uh, teach me the magic of doing everything with my soul even after losing everything i seek it to gift me its characteristics its abundant love the man attempts to control the nature the one who wants land becomes the dominant caste the land becomes his property so does woman who she converts into an object to be own he seeks to enslave nature through woman and woman through nature our duty is to resist both by destroying nature he destroys woman by destroying uh, destroying woman he destroys nature both are dangerous a woman nurtures a tree a man cuts it a woman protects a, a land a man destroys it my poem challenge the masculinity that seeks to rule over enslave and destroy the uh, women and nature thank you thank you ma'am so much uh, now let me just take another you know a different uh, uh, i'll just take i'll you know talk about i would want you to talk about uh the translation the idea of translation and how important do you think is translation of texts into english and what role has it played in the you know the dissemination of your poems because the poems that i have read are all in translation as you can and the translations have been done very beautifully we have poems which have been translated by uh lakshmi homstrom and even meena kandasamy has translated some of your poems i have seen so what what how important is translation for you and do you think that it has played a role in the dissemination of your poems of course a translating a word is like translating time it is about translating uh, the region populated by people speaking that language about translating their uh, lifestyle and their environment to be specific it is a reflection of uh, contemporary society translation helps to us to uh, how the society is a dominant or a slavery society it helps not just to understand the, the individuals uh, psychology uh, but the psychology of the society too uh, it is important for poems Yeah, you're, you're visible, ma'am. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is important for poems to be translated for other languages and uh, read, but it is more important to translate them uh, into English, which acts as a connecting language across the globe. It is both necessary and useful. when a poem is translated uh, into a regional language it reaches uh, uh, only the people who speaks the regional language but when translated into english it reaches a large uh, number of people and gain uh, a considerable attention when bama's one mom uh, first you know it's uh, now uh, bama bama is the prominent uh, dalit writer in tamil nadu you know her very well and bama's one mom was first in 1992 i think um, uh, uh, this year 30 years completed no it was first published uh, in tamil uh, there were many many post language society raised many questions about her language how she writes like this um, uh, the society raised so many questions the way she uh, she has written the novel the society asked why she wrote the way uh, she did but when it was translated into english and uh, uh, won the cross word award the novel was widely celebrated i think so um my poem 
uh, have been translated into Hindi, Marathi, Gujarati, Bengali, and so many languages. They have lastly been translated into English. Uh, Lakshmi Armstrong translated the poems of uh, four Tamil poets into English. The book was called Wild Girls. We reached across the world. My poems translated into English have been the part of the syllab syllabus in uh, colleges and universities. In fact, uh, you have called me after uh, reading my poems you know, in English. Uh, this is the victory of my uh, words, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> now, I would have, you know, wanted you to read a poem in Tamil, maybe. And if you could tell me which poem you are reading, then I could, uh, you know, trans uh, read the translated version. Uh, is it? Is it? Is there a poem that you would want to read uh, in Tamil? And just let me know which. Yes, of course, Sabarna. I, I, I have chosen one poem uh, that. Yeah. The question of century, I think so. No travel in what trick can be. The is what is what is it called? The question of century? Yeah. Yeah, the question of centuries, right. So if you could yes. read the you know the Tamil. Yes, yes, yes. Hmm. <laughs> நூற்றாண்டுகளின் ஒற்றை கேள்வி தலை சாய்த்து நீர் அருந்தும் சிறு பட்சியை போல வீட்டின் முற்றத்தில் அமர்ந்திருந்த அப்பாவிடம் கேட்கிறேன் நீர் நாயின் நனையாத தோல் என மினுமினுக்கின்றன அவர் கண்கள் உள்ளுக்குள் உடைப்படுத்தாலும் காட்டிக்கொள்ளாமல் நிற்கிறேன் உடலின் குப்பியில் விஷத்தை இட்டார் போல வலி பெருகுகிறது உள்ளங்கையை முரமாக்கி சலித்தெடுத்த மண்ணை ருசி பார்த்த காலம் தொட்டே கேட்டுக்கொண்டிருக்கிறேன் பதில் சொல்வார் இல்லை ஒட்டு போட்ட சக்கரம் என தும்பியை பிடித்து கழித்த பருவத்திற்கு உருண்டோடுகிறது அவர் மனம் வலி பிசகாமல் அவரும் அவர் அப்பாவிடம் கேட்டது நினைவிலாடும் போல் இருக்கிறது அப்பாவும் அழுகிறார் நானும் அழுகிறேன் இதயத்தின் ஒற்றை கப்பியில் கட்டப்பட்ட கேள்வியின் ஊஞ்சல் காலத்தின் இருபுறமும் சென்று வருகிறது பதிலின்றி பதில் சொல்வார் எவருமின்றி சற்று தொலைவில் சொப்பு வைத்து தனியே விளையாடும் என் மகள் உதட்டின் விளிம்புக்குள் துக்கத்தை மடித்து அதே கேள்வியை என்னிடம் கேட்கிறாள் சரி ஊராகாதா அம்மா ஓகே so uh, this is the question of centuries which is trans which has been translated by anita n jairam uh, yeah. yes like like a little bird drinking water leaning its head i asked my father sitting in the foyer his eyes glimmer like an otter's unwet skin though i crumpled inside i stand unrevealing the pain increases as if the vial of the body is filled with poison since the day i tasted the mud we knowed using my palm i have been asking he never answers as a patched up wheel his mind drifts to the happy days of catching dragon flies with the unwearying pain the memory of him asking his father may have descended dad cries i cry along the swing of question tied to the single pulley of heart oscillates between the two sides of time without answer with no one to answer daughter playing with toys in a distance restraining her grief within the edge of her mouth asks the same old question why can't a ghetto be a town mama so how powerful and how you know deep these this poem was thank you so much for reading that now let me just take you to <clears throat> this idea of uh, including you know dalit literature or making dalit literature as part of the syllabi and there has been of course a lot of political furor about it we'll not get into the politics behind it but what i want to know is that you know 
because you already mentioned about periyar and uh, ambedkar and you know the difficulty of uh, teaching them in the class P people don't want to teach them in the class so how how important is it you think that uh, the uh, you know indian writing needs to be more inclusive as regards the inclusion of uh, dalit literature uh, and and making it part of the syllabi if not in the initial years maybe you know in the college level and the university level how how important it is to be made a, a, you know to to include them as part of the syllabi what is your take on that yeah behind the act of way, uh, including the words of dalits and uh, minorities in the syllabus there are efforts and time put in uh, my pro, uh, by professors who are part of the syllabus committee Uh, there is a long procedure for the piece of work to be included in syllabus permission is sought from uh, board of studies academic council and the senate to remove works included after that process uh, for uh, political reason is not fair uh, not just dalit writing is removed but the works of non dalit writers uh, writing about the marginalized and uh, minority issues have also been removed Arundhira is um, working with comrades. Uh, Selvraj, Selvraj uh, was the uh, writer in Tamil Nadu, famous writer in Tamil Nadu. You know about uh, Arundhira. Arundhira is uh, uh, book named "Working with Comrades" and Selvraj, uh, known book. Pudumai Pittan was one of the famous writer in Tamil Nadu. Pudumai Pittan's "Tumba Kani" have been removed uh, in Tamil Nadu universities. and the ak ramanujam has uh, written the noor ramayanam uh, ramayanangal in kadai you know that uh, um, three under ramayanas have been removed from delhi university last year sugirani's um, kaimaru bamas uh, sankati and magaswada devi's trobadi were removed from delhi university syllabus you know about uh, uh, about this the tamil nadu chief minister uh, mr mk stalin um, uh, issued the statement uh, condemning the removal and uh, uh, it should be uh, uh, re included in uh, in the syllabus again this is the first time uh, that's happening in the in the history of tamil nadu the chief minister uh, came uh, forward for the tamil uh, dalit writers um to re include the uh, their writings uh, into the syllabus the tamil nadu is the land of, because the tamil nadu is the land of ayyappa the sapandi the it is the land of tande uh, periyar it is the land of tata rete malai srinivasan and dravid uh, especially it is the land of dravidian movement you know periyar arya anna and kalenja now um uh, tamilnadu chief minister mk stalin so my poem kaimaru is about uh, manual scam just that uh, poem was removed from uh, delhi university of the syllabus uh, that poem kaimaru is a wonderful poem i think so it is about the manual scam just um, um and that poem um, was translated uh, into english by vasantha surya who Uh, lives in bangalore she is a wonderful uh, translator uh, she translated that uh, kaimar poem uh, that poem is uh, also but uh, manual scavengers when i was studied uh, uh, teacher training i used the way to uh, school uh, there was a lady um, uh, she 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 carried uh, the sheet in, in the basket basket Uh, she used to go that way when i was go, uh, uh, going to uh, my teacher training school i i walked with uh, that lady uh, that time um, uh, uh, um, yellow water um, follows from uh, her head no um, always i wa i was watching that uh, incident uh, it was uh, so hurt to me why this manual scam just like was uh, like this uh, what was the remedy what was the, the why the uh, government didn't take the uh, proper action against this uh, uh, incident i think so 
so after my uh, teacher training schooling i have written this poem kai maru about manuel scrivener's canvas i think you have read the poem uh, kai maru it, it, it is in um, um, a, a internet no you can find out that uh, poem so uh, 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 so i i i can show the face of the uh, country or society to to my readers or my audience no who, who are going to read my poems i i want to show the uh, space of the society so it is one of the uh, face no uh, that manuel scar is still uh, we are sending rocket no to the moon but still manuel scavenger's uh, life is very um, a sad life no so uh, i have written this poem so um, uh, politically there, there are some pressure to remove this or when the when the readers uh, read the poem they know the face of the society no so the government and the um, university didn't want that so so only they removed uh, my poetry and bama mahasvira uh, basically we are blank to as a comment you know we and the bama mahasvira devi from west bengal so <laughs> so there are political reasons are also these right so um uh, and how can a writer uh, write only about the good things no? absolutely so say we need to write about the, its good quality too i wrote that and it was removed a large number of students and the people uh, used to read the poem only after it was removed uh, that way i am uh, grateful to the delhi university for removing it from the syllabus <laughs> <laughs> right yeah that was a i mean i think uh, literature has always put up a mirror uh, to society that is how it is the most important function that literature plays so but then unfortunately we only see want to see ourselves you know very beautiful so that is why we don't want to see the ugly side of ourselves mm. uh, that is why probably this was uh, not uh, it was it was removed from the syllabus anyway uh, now let me just uh, you know take you to again another uh, detour from this which would be like if you could speak about dalit feminism a little and why you think it is necessary why yeah. and all we needed a separate uh, branch of feminism which would be dalit feminism and what is right now who are the dalit feminists whom we need to know because i think your poem is also very very feministic and it can be called a reflection of dalit feminism in all in all probability so uh, feminism is a term of liberation the term that uh, demands its rights i see feminism as a collective action against the oppression of women uh, <clears throat> misogyny enslavement of women and caste which is fundamental to all these uh, issues and religion which serves as the origin of the caste both men and uh, women should take uh, it forward uh, commun uh, communism should be inclusive for all women it should also take into account the working class people feminism cannot be generalized across the world or across india it depends on the region language time race village city, village city and other things however the fundamental concept of women liberation and the women right is a face for uh, women feminism is different from dalit feminism what women right is women writing not feminist writing there is a difference between women writing and the feminist writing huh? Uh, many women are here uh, write women writing and not for feminist writing i think so uh, women writing is not sufficient for women's liberation the kind of feminism uh, i get to see is very elite uh, for nirbhaya of delhi um, chennai organized a huge rally no you know the 
nirbhaya case you know very well you no know? nirbhaya in uh, in delhi uh, she she was gang raped in in a bus you no know? that time uh, at that time in chennai uh, so many uh, social activist actors and writers so many are gathered and uh, uh, organize a huge rally in chennai marina beach you no know? film actors to entered it but dalit women like uh, ariyalur nandini uh, so in tamil nadu there are so many cases uh, like uh, uh, nirbhaya uh, ariyalur Ari is the uh, town in ariyalur district uh, there was a girl called nandini she is uh, she was raped no um, ariyalur nandini and teni teni is one of the town in teni district in of tamil nadu teni raghavi uh, was raped and uh, salem salem is the district of tamil nadu salem is the uh, uh, district headquarters rajalakshmi was raped and killed you no know? so many incidents uh, happening here but Uh, nirbhaya when nirbhaya was raped and killed uh, in in tamil nadu all over the tamil nadu so many rallies so many um, meetings were conducted no above for nirbhaya uh, by the social activist actors and writers uh, when uh, dalit girls were raped and killed Uh, nothing happened in tamil nadu ariyalur uh, nandini selam rajalakshmi and teni raghavi so um, I, i i i got actually uh, uh, <laughs> i got surprised what what are the mindset of the society you know if uh, if uh, non dalit uh, women or or a non dalit woman uh, was raped and killed uh, the society uh, at once uh, react you no know? if uh, non dalit girls or dalit women are killed uh, the the society keep silent this is uh, it, it gives me very anger it, it, it's it yeah so i i i show my anger uh, through my writing so dalit writing is different from uh, dalit feminism and dalit writing and uh, uh, feminism is different from feminism um, it is important to speak about family uh, domestic war and gender equality you no know? uh, dalit women are landless um, you know in tamil nadu uh, dr kalanjan karnanidhi <coughs> announced that uh, act that uh, the um, uh, girl child are sold the uh, own the land but uh, uh, contemporary it will not happen like this uh, only men are uh, own land so dalit women are landless they do not have uh, language no or uh, roof over their it's um, dalit women have no language um, the, the language which i am speaking with you is uh, male's language i think so no every words because the the um, in, in the early stage women create the language but after that the men are uh, creating the words so they they take this the language too so women have no language uh, dalit women are landless so uh feminism is not inclusive of dalit feminism but the dalit feminism is inclusive of feminism for all women uh, we can get this come to know this clarity i think so feminism is not inclusive of dalit feminism but dalit feminism is inclusive of feminism for all women so i am proud that my poems and activists speak dalit feminism thank you thank you ma'am and uh, i'm uh, absolutely your your poems give voice to lot of uh, women who are silenced and have been oppressed so it does become a mouthpiece a representative voice for so many women not just dalit women but women at large i think 
so thank you so much ma'am and i think that is uh, that was my last question uh modumita uh, do you want me to uh, you know uh, do you want another poem recitation or should we uh, kind of end with this because yes I, you can have a poem recitation i think that would be good okay so um ma'am if you could read any one poem of yours if you have it ready with you if you could yeah. read just one poem in english if it's that, you know, i think there's just one question from one of our students okay, you know right. what i think you know this is kollani shashmon uh, she actually uh, wanted to ask i think this is what she uh, is wanting to ask that when uh, the government you know in tamil nadu uh, took the step of reincorporating dalit writings in the syllabus she uh, is wanting to know that is this uh you know of course this is a helpful step but do you think there are not other uh efforts or other steps that should be taken you know if you're talking in terms of more equal uh space apart from just incorporating literature from a particular section so is there something else that you actually look forward to okay so this is uh, one question that you know a student had if you could uh, ma'am say a little bit on this apna what is the question Ma'am, the question is. Can you repeat? Yes, yes, I'll repeat it. Uh, the question is that uh, the are there any other steps apart from you know the in uh, the in, uh, including uh, Dalit uh, writing in the syllabi? What are the other steps that can be taken to uh, to bring about an equality in society and kind of in integrate Dalits within the so-called mainstream? If you say it like that, I mean, how how do you what are the other things that that the government or you know the people can do so that dalits can feel equal to the rest i think i got the question right isn't it modumita ji is it is it this question yes 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 absolutely yeah, yeah of course uh, parna uh, uh, tamil nadu uh, chief minister uh, uh, <clears throat> mk stalin um, issued the no uh, statement in the tamil nadu state assembly other than the social activist writers and uh, prominent writers uh, in all over uh, india the more than 1500 um, 500 uh, they have signed a petition and sent it to delhi university uh, to uh, re include the uh, writings of bama sugirani magasveda devi in the syllabus um, uh, this step um, as 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 taken uh, the writers of um, all over india uh, this is the other step and in tamil nadu most of the writers keep silent i think so always i i <laughs> I, i spoke about the writers of tamil nadu like this uh, don't think so but this is the true um, more than now the in tamil nadu no vange vayal village already i have men- mentioned you vange um, vayal is the village of uh, pudukote district of tamil nadu um, um, 20 20 days back uh, there was an incident the upper caste or dominant caste um, people uh, contaminated the over it water tank uh, Uh, where the which the dalit uh, people uh, drink water um, they they contaminated water with the human waste shit um, the tamil nadu government um, um, take uh, necessary action um, for uh, the chief minister um, for cpcid you no know? but still 20 days uh, after but the culprit was not uh, found out now only uh, so uh, the, the dalit writers and uh, um, dalit movements dalit parties and uh, communist parties and um, uh, progressive writers forum um, i condemn this uh, in, uh, incident but uh, other writers uh, keep silent always uh, the, there is a, a silent no so when uh, my poem and um, uh, bama's writing magasvedya's writing uh, were removed from the delhi university um, but the media um, 
exposure well, very well. Uh, they they came to our uh, house and interviewed and uh, uh, okay. But the writers uh, um, uh, said nothing about this. Okay. So you think there is a more or less a silence about it, but then the media can step in yes. and, you know, they can uh, take this matter further and maybe spread more, uh, sensitize people, not just the media, but people can be sensitized through institutions, through uh, more awareness programs, maybe, I think. Yes. And, and yes, the writing just play a very important role. Mm -hmm. Any other question, Mudumita Di? No, I think we can uh, wrap it up now. Right. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you for that uh, excellent uh, interaction. And it was absolutely, uh, it was it was uh, life altering as it was, uh, it has always, always been as whenever I interact with you, there's so much more I come to know about yeah. the reality of yeah. Dalit life. And uh, getting yeah. to read your poems on a public forum is always so much a pleasure, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I take this opportunity to thank you all. Uh, Dr. Uh, Habib, I think, uh, will take over from here. Habib, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. This is very interesting, actually, the way you have pointed out so many factors about the Dalit women, especially the Dalit people. And uh, from a very close by, you know, walk of life, you have experienced all such things, especially. And I was thinking about it also that I think we need to have some sort of a session on, uh, for example, how you perpetuate, uh, especially the caste discrimination in our daily life, the way you narrated the story of your childhood days. Such kind of stories will also help us to get some glimpses of the caste discrimination or so the inequality which are prevailing in the society. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam, very much for... Uh, uh, giving us uh, some glimpses of these kind of things, especially in our day-to-day -day life. Uh, now I just uh, request Monubita Di to uh, give the vote of thanks, especially uh, officially. Uh, thank you, Habib. Uh, before I move on officially uh, to the vote of thanks, you know, uh, I was de definitely, you know, I uh, perhaps, you know, stirred, uh, I think rightly disturbed by what... Uh, uh, ma'am said today, you know, uh, talking about not having a language, you know, as women, I think this is what we suffer. And of course, talking about the different kinds of feminism, saying that Dalit feminism is inclusive of feminism, but feminism has failed to include Dalit feminism. So, of course, this is uh, uh, striking, of course, that as women, where we stand all together in this uh, uh, space of not having our language, of not being able to tell our history, not being able to tell um, narratives ourselves. What I also thought that you know, uh, the construction of the syllabus as as it as it as it as it is, you know, and the writings of women like you know Shukita Rani of Bama, uh, I, I think you know disturbs us, and of course, you know, we are always traumatized by the idea of being disturbed, and if it is a woman uh, on the other side. I think it, it gets more more unnerving. So I hope you know we come to a space. You know when we talk about you know I think Ma'am began with talking about liberty. She started to talk about freedom. Uh, these are words that will only remain as part of our uh, daily dictionary without its implication. Uh, till the point we actually feel the resonance. You know of course an act of rape, which is an act of total violation emotionally, physically, and otherwise, if it does not come with the kind of protest, doesn't come with the kind of, uh, uh, I, I would say, uh, action that it demands, and if it is not equal for all women, that can also be equally disturbing. I think these are the things that you pointed, and I think I go back today, you know, of course, with, with, with these uh, thoughts, and of course, these are deeply provoking, and of course, at the least, I would say it, it, it is uh, something that um, will uh, change the way that perhaps we look at, an, uh, at things as, as an educator, as a teacher. Of course, that was a very important question, I think, Aparna put that, you know, what, what should be our approach to such issues, you know, in classrooms? They can be difficult, difficult for a number of reasons, okay? So, you know, how can we broach it? How can we 
bring uh, ourselves to this uh, space of more, uh, uh, you know, liberal acceptance. You know, equality is perhaps uh, still, you know, um, a term that is far-fetched. I think it is not so easy to achieve a sense of equality to allow everyone. But, ma'am, what I realize what the poems have done is that they have uh, perhaps started to tell the stories, the stories of women, women, you know, uh, uh, of, of a certain space, of certain uh, experiences. Of course, you know, you've talked about your education, you've talked about your uh, village life, you've talked about, you know, uh, how you have faced things as a poet. You know, these are very important. You know, you should speak and therefore, you know, uh, uh, it is it is it is uh, definitely uh, a, a starting point and i think you know we are happy that you know we get associated with you in this type of conversation which also makes us a part of this thinking process i will just end and you know thank you for this wonderful uh, uh, session you know I, I i was touched you know of course you know uh, oporna i wouldn't say is the one who introduced me to your poetry and i think i was struck by this particular poetry which is of course a translation by Lakshmi Holstrom, uh, and I'll just have these four lines. I think they will speak about, you know, what this particular uh, evening was all about. I need a language still afloat in the womb, which no one has spoken so far, which is not conveyed through signs and gestures. It will be open and honorable, not hiding in my torn underclothes. Yes, this is something I uh, I believe, you know, uh, as a woman, you know, this is exactly what we want, you know, to have our language and speak it the way that we want. Uh, so thank you, ma'am, for being with us. And we hope this is just the beginning of the interaction with the Department of English, Diamond Harbor Women's University. I think there will be many, many more interactions with you in the future. And we will be happy to have you again in the department. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I would begin by thanking our Vice Chancellor, Ma'am, Dr. Shoma Bondapadhyay, who is always a source of inspiration and who always lets us go with our academic ventures. I would thank our Register, Sir, Dr. Saidur Rahman. Sir is just not an encouragement, but then he's always a kind of a working force, you know, driving us, you know, to uh, achieve these kind of uh, steps or, you know, to take these steps. So thank you, Sir, for being with us. I would love to thank, you know, my colleagues in the department, Dr. Oparajita Hajra. She's the professor in the department and, you know, uh, Oparajita has always been somebody who's been so encouraging and so supportive of everything. I would thank today, of course, Dr. Oparna Singh for, uh, Singh for taking this, you know, uh, episode up you know of, of of bringing up this idea of this conversation with you so thank you uh, uh Aparna for this i would thank dr habib suban for not only being the anchor but he has been a strong support base in the department so thank you uh habib uh, i would thank uh malo shri mondo and kumar Adito. Uh, they are the people who work you know for, for for this particular program of course behind the scene but of course once again um you know make me part of the department and of course as i had begun uh by saying that dr indrila ghosh was also uh, the part of the department presently on a fellowship so uh, she's always there with us in such ventures so thank you indrila so uh and uh, above all i would like to to thank my students you know i had a wonderful response you know the moment we posted the poster you know and especially for our phd scholars let me tell you ma'am if the, even if they are not really working directly on you but you know a, a number of them you know uh, happen to be working on dalit dalit feminism and i think this uh, in core you know conversation of you know what exactly is this idea of dalit feminism you know getting it from you i think they will be uh, much benefited by research scholars in the department both the EMPHIL and the PhD students, I think, you know, will be deeply benefited by this. So I thank the scholars for being there. And of course, our students from both the postgraduate and, uh, of course, the undergraduate has been there. I would also thank my colleagues across the university. We had extended this invitation to them, and I know that some of them has joined us here today. So uh, thank you for being with us. And once again, ma'am, I would take this final opportunity to thank you for this wonderful episode and, you know, stir us, disturb us like this. You know, I, I'm going to give us this disturbing thoughts and that is what we need. And one day, perhaps, together as women, we will claim our language. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah, I would like to thank Dr. Matimita Majumdar and Dr. Abhip and Dr. Aparna Singh and the students and all uh, the other 
professors of uh, Diamond Arbor University, uh, readers and the viewers. Uh, I'm very happy uh, here um, for joining this uh, moment, wonderful moment for me. This is an unforgettable moment for me. Uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. If you uh, like me to come to your university and uh, give you a lecture, definitely I will do in future. I will join with you. All the time. Yes, ma'am. We, we, we will be looking forward to that. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. We are ending the broadcast. Mm -hmm.